Here it is, my friends, just out in the last month or so. The newest Daniel Estelin updated, revised, and expanded North American Union edition. It is a lot thicker. Hundreds of photos, documents available at InfoWars.com. We're proud to carry this book in the InfoWars.com uh, bookstore video shopping cart. Also, a great companion to it uh, is my film that covers Bilderberg and the New World Order Master Plan, in-game blueprint for global enslavement. Joining us for the next 25 minutes or so is Daniel Estelin via cell phone uh, from rural Spain. He's got a big press conference coming up Friday. His book being turned into a major motion picture. Very, very exciting by the folks that are putting out Terminator, Salvation, the Philip K. Dick movies, and a lot more. He told me about this two years ago, and I kept it in confidence. If anybody else would have told me something like that, I would have, I would have, uh, you know, uh, uh, thought they were making it up. But Daniel's always been such a great source of info that I believed him. Then I talked to some folks I knew in Hollywood that uh, separately have worked with the Philip K. Dick estate with his daughters and confirmed that they knew the Halcyon group and what they were doing. So that was very, very exciting. So he's here to talk about that as well. But first, the hit piece, and that's what Bloomberg's reporting. They're very excited. The New York Times likes it. The establishment loves this new film, The New World Order. They think it makes us all look like a bunch of idiots. Daniel Estelin was interviewed for this film, but wasn't in the film. And I think he wasn't in the film because... Following around for two years, they couldn't find anything to make him fit into their stereotypical conspiracy theorist box. They did find that following me around for two years, but in the end, it's just going to backfire on them. Daniel Estelin, great to have you here with us. Thanks for having me on the show, Alex. Well, absolutely. Uh, the people from the c Productions, again, it's not that they made us look like idiots. They make us look like crazies. And that's exactly what I was talking about a few days in one of the radio or television shows from England. You know, I'm tired of seeing time and again how people who are fighting this thing and should know better actually, you know, fall for this, you know, same trick each and every time. Now, these people, you know, look at whatever the other character's name, they followed me around for a year, a year and a half while we were in the United States promoting my book, The True Story, The Build of a Group, from New York to Portland, I think to Eugene, and I can't remember if they went with us to California or not, but they certainly went from East Coast to the West Coast. And certainly they obviously didn't have anything, you know, worthy of making us look, making me look like an idiot or crazy, so they decided to take it out. What doesn't make any sense, and again, you know, these, these are the people with some very dark, uh, uh, sinister objectives, whatever they may be, but they certainly haven't done us any favors. Because, again, talking to the people who understand, who are part of the establishment, they're all basically saying, shaking their heads, you know, this thing, this documentary, the c Thing Productions, New World Order, has taken us, you know, not a couple of steps back, but way, way back in this fight. Because, again, you cannot wear toilet seat around your neck or a G-string around your head while you screen the government did it from a corner of a major intersection in New York City and be taken seriously by anybody who's a normal Joe. And I think that's the objective. The objective is not to talk to each other, as so many people do on all these, you know, chats and forums, but actually go out and try to convince normal nine-to-five working people who go to work, who come home, who watch television, play golf on the weekends, play cards with friends, do barbecues, that the New World Order exists. And the only way to do this is not to wear toilet seats or G-strings, but actually make sense and not talk crazy. Well, absolutely. You know, the issue here, the way Bloomberg and the L.A. Times and the New York Times are going after me on this is, is by association. And then they also, I had Bilderberg Security walk up to me in the bar the night before it closed in Chantilly, and they said, people pull fire alarms, they go to prison. They try to steal vases. And Rob Jacobson was my witness. He's with me, and we go, what are you talking about, pull fire alarms? We go upstairs, the door closes, Right as I go on a radio show, the fire alarm goes off. Then I go downstairs, and the head of security walks up and says, I'm going to F you up, Jones. And all of this happens. And then the way the movie makes it look, I'm crazy. I think a fire alarm is for me, and that's what the – But I mean, I can't help, Daniel, when the media just lies – and, 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 you know, when Bloomberg says, I'm imagining fire alarms, I, I mean, they, the news is saying, I'm imagining cars following us that followed us off Bilderberg. I mean, I had guys walking up to me at my hotel saying, let's go attack the State Department together. And they were big FBI agents. And, and, you know, so, 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 you know, we're in reality, which looks kooky to people. And then the mainline public so dumbed down, it looks, yeah, I mean, it can be made to look crazy. And they stick the one guy in there from England or Ireland who thinks he has a chip in his head. You know, that's that that's the production company's issue. I mean, 
I guess I could turn down all interviews in the future or, 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 or you could. And I actually am turning down a lot of interviews. I mean, how do you, how do you handle that, Daniel? Well, you know, uh, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, one of the things that New York Times and Washington Post as well have never done a come anywhere near me or touch me because they know anything they throw at me, I can actually, you know, deflect it and, 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 and win any argument against them. You know, uh, not very long ago, I found one of the chats. Uh, and one of the other uh, 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 websites, people talking about, you know, the, the need for uh, creating a, a universal language. And it kind of a thought occurred to me, you know, do people actually understand that, you know, part of H.G. Wells's ultimate revolution was, in fact, the elimination of all national languages in favor of what he called basic English, which had a vocabulary, or would have had a vocabulary of only 850 words. Now, if you ask people for, as an example, if people who are listening to the show and who can explain it to others, because, again, you cannot say government did it wearing a toilet seat around your neck. You have to explain to people who, why, what, and where. That's the only way we can actually get them on our side, because the only thing we can do is get people to listen. So, for example, if I have a couple of minutes, I'd like to give you an example of what I'm talking about. All right, I want you to do that, but then in the time we have limited... I want to get into your new book, the work you're doing. You haven't I'll be been there, hot. I'll be there, uh, I'll have two minutes. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Now, you know, as you know, you know, we talked about this before. What's today's called the Bilderberg Group, about six, seven hundred years ago, had another name. It was called the Venetian Black Nobility. Now, these people who are today the Bilderbergers, they know that ideas are more powerful weapon than guns, than fleets, and bombs. Now, in order to secure acceptance for their imperial ideas, the Venetian Nobility seeks to control the way people think. We know that. If you can control the way people think, say the Venetians, you can control the way they respond to events, no matter what those events may be. So if we can do the same and get people actually, you know, to think the way we want them to think, we can win. For example, you know, we're talking about languages. Uh, in the early part of the uh, 1200s, you know, Italian language didn't exist. It was born with a man by the name of Dante Alighieri, who was, the, uh, of course, the writer, the great genius behind the Divine Comedy, who refined the counter form of poetry. Now, his follower, Francesco Petrarca, sought to advance the language further with the invention of, of a sonnet. And Petrarca's friend Boccaccio invented this thing called the Decameron. Now, Decameron was written in order to prevent the, in the Italian society from sinking into the cultural pessimism and dying out during the Black Death of the 1340s. You see, that's how the Italian language was born. Then Geoffrey Chaucer, who attended one of the lectures by Boccaccio, on Dante in 1375. He got the idea to do the same thing in English, and you have the Canterbury Tales, which, of course, recounts the hilarious tales told on the religious pilgrimage to the Church of Canterbury. The same thing happened in French when the Christian humanist Erasmus of Rotterdam inspired his student, Francois Ribelot, to do the same in France by creating this amazing character called Gargantua. And then in Spanish, we have this great example of Don Quixote de la Mancha, the accountant than his psychic Sancho Panza. You see, in this way, languages created by poets lifted up the populations that have been dominated by ignorance and thereby ruled over. In fact, the most important thing in this entire thing that I said is that the nations were created by languages and not the other way around, which now, you know, suddenly makes sense why H.G. Wells wanted to create the basic English, because in Wells's future world, the English most speak and write today is very different yeah, it's Ingsoc. It's Ingsoc. I mean, that's what George Arwell in 1984 talks about, dumbing the language down so it's impossible to relay an idea. So they dumb it down to just emotions. And so people just say, that looks goofy. It must not be true. But the sharp guy in the suit on TV selling you that Iraq has WMDs, that looks and sounds credible. So you go along with it. Yes, I understand yeah, exactly whole, what you're that's saying. That's the whole idea why they're in Europe. They're creating one language. There's no longer languages, individual countries have their own languages, but they're creating three, four main languages that everybody must speak at the expense of their languages. But the French are fighting that. The Spanish are fighting that. But the point is that, you know, they're trying to do this. And if you can explain to people from a logical perspective, without wearing a toilet seat or making crazy noises, which a lot of people do, then actually you have people who are listening to you from a point of view of logic and reason, and then we have them won over. Because, again, as long as logic and reason prevails, we can win this war. If people are basically talking to each other, see, there's two things. Okay, there's the principle and the technique. And the technique is that all these people, most of them are crazy, who are talking to each other in all these forums and chats, who don't make any sense to anybody outside the forum or the chat, 
All right. I don't know if it's uh, child. And that's what you're saying. I understand the Prison Planet Forum was saying you're a Bilderberg Group member. Ridiculous. I'm, not ta- talking about, I'm just talking. That's the crazy. Yeah, so but that was some. That was somebody linking so many, to a story. A million posts a month. I can't. So yeah. And so many and so many forums in so many countries. And I'll be in English and French and <laughs> in German and in Spanish. And they're all the same because the type of people who do these kinds of things is the same. But the idea is instead of wasting time talking to each other. Learn about history. Learn about learn about culture. I agree. That's what I do. Yeah, and try to explain to people why what today is called Bilderberg eight hundred years ago was called something else, and why they're doing what they're doing. Because again, to say well they're trying to take a freedom away to most people is just simply not good enough. Yeah, this is the true ruling council of the planet. And, and if you watch the European Parliament, as I've been doing, they admit it is a global Europe is what they're calling it. And they're openly announcing world government, a bank of the world that we will pay our carbon taxes to. Daniel, talking to you yesterday on the phone, you were starting to say peak oil was a scam. I know you'd been trying to research it and questioning it a few years ago. Uh, do you now believe that peak oil is a, a eugenicist, uh, a false scarcity scam?